Paula Williams. I'm John Williams. Our company is ABCI, Aviation Business Consultants International. We worked with a lot of aviation companies in the past to help them find customers and sell their products. So why are we wasting everyone's time with the basics? Well, some of the people watching this video have been doing marketing for years. Yes, but do you remember this guy? Absolutely. Good old Vince Lombardi. Three straight and five total league championships in seven years, including winning the first two Super Bowls following 66 and 67 NFL seasons. He's considered by many to be one of the best and most successful coaches in NFL history. The National Football League Super Bowl trophy is named in his honor. He was enshrined in Pro Football Hall of Fame in 71. Yes, I remember him. <laughs> Good. And most of his guys had been playing football for years. Many of the guys on his teams already had Super Bowl rings. But once a year, Vince Lombardi would sit them down and run through the basics. He'd start by holding up a football and saying, Gentlemen, this is a football. It probably drove them all crazy, but it was part of the reason he was so successful. It's easy to overlook things when you're in the middle of them. And the more experience you have, the more you can learn from a discussion of basics. Also, I don't think they teach the basics of marketing right in school. Fine, so let's get started with the basics then. Well, the first basic is what we always say, no random acts of marketing. Right, everything should be part of a plan. So what's the plan? Well, today, we'll start with clearing up some confusion about advertising and marketing. They're not the same thing, although most people think so. Right, we'll also look or talk about what marketing can and can't do. Market research and product development, which is part of marketing as well, right? Exactly, and the three phases of a great marketing system with examples of how they apply to trade shows. So we all know a dog can't win a horse race, even if the dog has better marketing, right? Right, so if you show up at a trade show and find out that a competitor is, is exhibiting just down the aisle from you, you would better know why your product is better. Definitely, because you're going to get questions from people who just picked up a brochure three booths down and want to know if your product is the horse or the dog. But what if your product is the dog? <laughs> well, most products in aviation aren't direct competitors. One product might be better in certain circumstances than the other, like one product is better for small piston aircraft and the other is more designed for a multi-engine aircraft. Or one is the leader in cost effectiveness while the other one is uh, the luxury option. Right. Each product has its strengths and weaknesses, but if you're standing in a trade show booth, you should probably know what they are. Right. Well, I've run into a lot of people at trade shows who don't know how their product compares to the competitors. Exactly. So you don't want to be that guy. So this is long cycle marketing, which is an example marketing system where everything is measurable. Kind of looks complicated to me, but all of our clients are very familiar with this diagram. Yes, and a lot of them think that it's overkill, but then one of the most common reasons for a business to fail is because they underestimate the amount of time and effort it takes to make a sale. In the words of Annabel Smith from the A-Team, overkill is underrated. But we're going to simplify it for today's discussion and talk about phase one, advertising and prospecting, right? Exactly. Advertising and prospecting is a natural fit for trade shows. Right, because you're getting the attention of people who know nothing about you or your company or your product yet. Trade shows are really the only way to literally be in the same room with a bunch of these people that you've never met. And if you've done a great job of picking a trade show where the attendees are the right demographics for your product or service, then getting their attention should be pretty easy. Right, but you only have a few seconds since they're competing for the attention of all those other booths. Right. Trade shows are just one of many ways to get the attention of new people. These blue arrows are the others. Great. So you need to give them a reason to give you their contact information, right? Exactly. So you offer them something that's low cost and low risk. In this case, it's an ebook or a white paper, but it could be a free consultation or a free trial version of your product or something else. Okay. So you get their contact information, you send them something of value, and then you can make a decision about how to continue the relationship. Yeah, this is what we call qualifying a prospect. The one that seem, ones that seem like a good fit um, are worth the time and resources to follow up with uh, in a more expensive way. We can even make decisions based on the information they give us, whether to send them a $6 information package or a 20 cent postcard. Makes sense to me. We want to be accommodating to everyone, but we have to spend our resources wisely. So back to our drawing. 
So phase two is building credibility and closing. We recommend to our clients, unless they're a brand new company, that they spend 50% of their marketing resources on phase two and three. That's unusual, isn't it? Definitely. Most companies spend the majority of their marketing dollars on phase one and actually just on advertising. But phase two and phase three is where the money is made. Makes sense. If you never close sales, you can advertise so you're blue and never make any money. Yep, and this is where many companies fall down on the job. Just like any other relationship, you need to take the first time, take the time to build trust and let prospects know you're on their side. Exactly. A lot of salespeople get into this uh, sales is like hunting metaphor that's adversarial. Right, and as a customer, you don't want to be hunted or set up or have a salesperson get us. That's because um, that's what happens when when salespeople try to rush the process. You have to know what your typical length of the sales cycle is and give people the time to feel good about the decision. But you can't let them just walk away from a potential sale because your competitors will get them. <laughs> right. So you have to have a reason to stay in touch. That makes sense. So you have a series of interactions in phase two. Yep, and you ask the prospect something like this. So, John, will you be my prospect for this conversation? <laughs> of course. So, John, what time frame are you looking at to make this decision? Why don't you check back with me after the first of the month? I need to get my new budget numbers and see if I can afford this product. Excellent. So I'll give you a call on the second, and meanwhile, I'll send you a copy of our newsletter and our tip of the week emails. Is that okay? That works. I'm looking forward to the information. Right. So with just that conversation, we just set up a follow-up program with the prospect's permission, and you can see how the other steps in this process also support this. Okay. So we made the sale, but we're not done yet. Nope, because phase three is where a lot of the money is made in aviation. Resales, recaptures, and referrals. Making resales and getting referrals depends on your customers being satisfied with the product, right? Absolutely. If they don't like it, they're not going to buy it again, and they're certainly not going to recommend it. So let's talk about how this is done. Right. So we think you should provide every new customer with a new customer package, something that includes all of the information they need. And a satisfaction survey will give you information you need for the research phase we talked about. Right. And then uh, during all those calls, thank you, gifts, referral, incentive packages, weekly emails, newsletters, greeting cards, and so on, we could add uh, trade show visits to this list as well. Definitely. We make an effort to see all of our old customers at trade shows. Sometimes that's the only time we see them in person and get to shake their hand and tell them thank you for being a customer. That is so important. Aviation is an in-person business and trade shows are a great opportunity to see people and uh, in person cost effectively. That's one of the biggest reasons for going to trade shows. We send invitations to our old clients, take them to lunch or buy them coffee, um, have some great conversations and let them know how much we appreciate them. So here's the list of things to do based on the basics. Right. Definitely do your research beforehand. Make sure your booth gets attention and you've given people a good reason to stop by your booth. We just did a show about contests, entertainment, and product demonstrations. That video is a good place to get ideas. Right. Um, credibility and closing. You're wasting your time and getting sore feet at a trade show if you don't follow up and make the sales afterwards. And you want to meet with current and past customers as well. So if this is the first time you've tuned in, this video is part of a series that ABCI has put together in conjunction with Aviation Pros Live. The series includes topics such as how a trade show fits into your complete marketing system. We provide details of what we've done for clients to help them have successful, profitable trade shows and share them with you as well. Exactly. So watch for more videos in this series and in the meantime, download our ebook. Aviation people are all into pre-flight checklists, right? Absolutely, especially since they have so much time and print so many mistakes. I wouldn't take off without following the checklist, and I wouldn't invest in a trade show without walking through the items that we know will make it successful. See you next time.